Welcome inside the Acres Broadcast Center. I'm Tim Mulhelpt, and this is your Sports Nightly Ticker. It's a busy night for Nebraska athletics as Huskers volleyball is in Illinois to take on Northwesterners tonight, and we're just under two hours away from first serve. Freshman phenom Lexi Rodriguez will join Sports Nightly tonight, followed by John Baylor and Lauren Cook-West will take over at 7.30 with the pregame. Following their standout performances at the Maryland Smith Sunflower Invitational, Lindsey Thiel and Nicole Hansen were named Big Ten Co-Golfers of the Week today. The pair each recorded a three-round 54-hole score of 219, with each golfer recording a career best round of 70 on a 72-par course. Over to Pro Sports, the MLB wildcard race is heating up as the regular season winds down. Tonight's slate is full of playoff impl implications. Only one final, though, so far. The AL East leading Rays blasted the Jays in a heated game. It saw the benches clear. 7-1 to the final score in that one. The Yankees look to keep pace with the Blue Jays and the Red Sox in the AL wildcard as they take on the Rangers in the Bronx. First pitch is just moments away. Orioles are at the Phillies. The Phillies are chasing the NL East title and the second wild card spot in the NL. And that one is against the last place Orioles. That game is also just getting underway. Mets at the Red Sox. The Red Sox are looking to add to their one and a, uh, excuse me, game and a half lead in the AL wild card race as they take on the Mets in Boston at 610. And as comfortable occupants of the NL's second wild card, the Red Hot St. Louis Cardinals are battling the NL Central leading Brewers in Milwaukee at 6.40 p.m. Later tonight, Rockies will host the Dodgers as the Giants lead that NL West by one game. And the Dodgers uh, looking to chase up the standings there. First pitch at 7.40. Braves at Diamondbacks at 8.40. Mariners and Athletics will get underway at 8.40 p.m. as well. And the Padres were quickly running out of time to make one final push for that second NL wildcard spot. They'll take on the Giants in San Diego at 9 p.m. That's the ticker. I'm Tim Mulhelpt, and this is Sports Nightly on the Huskers Radio Network. Live inside Memorial Stadium, this is the Huskers Radio Network. Rolling to the right side as Demorat being pressured, throws downfield, passes intercepted, picked off by the Cornhuskers. It's Deontay Williams, second pick of the day, third turnover forced by the Black Shirts, and Nebraska will take over. Third and five from the seven. Pistol set, two wideouts left, Lieber to the near side. In motion is Toure, snap back, turn, run the option to the near side. Adrian pitches it back to Samore to the five. He is in. Touchdown, Nebraska. It's Sports Nightly. All the Huskers, all the time. Sports Nightly is presented by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who reminds you to buckle up and put the phone down. Here are your hosts, Greg Sharp and Jessica Cootie on the Huskers Radio Network. Tim was giving you some baseball scores. Did, did you happen to catch Connor McGregor throwing out a first pitch the other night? That was brutal. That was breaking news last night during the show, and my Twitter feed was just blowing up with it. Like, I thought, is is that on purpose? But why would you go out there in a suit and try to wind up and throw from the top of the mound? Yeah. Coat jacket on. Tight. And Tight. Not, not like a yeah. loose one. Like, it was a fitted coat jacket. <laughs> it was. I think it's the worst one I've ever seen. And Anthony Fauci, Dr. Fauci, had a pretty bad one last year, too. He's like, he spiked one in the ground when he went to throw out one for the Nationals. This one was 15 yards to the right of the plate. Wasn't it? Did, was it 50, maybe 10, 10 to 12 no, it yards? It almost like the people in the behind the screen ducked. Like that was like way the fans that were sitting in the seats to the right of home plate. It hit the it hit the screen there, and they were ducking like because it came right at them. They weren't paying attention. But was it 50 Cent that threw a really bad one too? I think. That sounds right. Yeah. Yeah, that that does sound right. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's. I mean, if you Google it, it's the first thing. Uh, 50 cent first pitch. It was really bad, too. So, uh, <laughs> someone should make a, a compilation the of worst. the worst first pitches. That was awful. <laughs> you were telling me about it last night on the show, and then I, uh, Sports Center's had fun with it all day today. They've been showing that thing up a lot. It's not easy to do, particularly like you said, put the coat on that's tight, and you're not a baseball player. It's obviously not a baseball player. He yeah. grew up in Europe, probably never played baseball in his life. So. I don't know who is his stylist for the day, but should have probably <laughs> recommended he not go with that tight suit. Oh, goodness. That was bad. Pretty sure he had shades on, too. Maybe he couldn't see where the catcher was lined up either. I don't know. Well, welcome to the show. It's a Sports Island 90-minute version tonight. We're going to hand it off to John Bader and Lauren Cook-West, Husker Volleyball. 
about to embark on Big Ten play. They're in Evanston, Illinois, to take on the Northwestern Wildcats, who are on the north side of Chicago for this one tonight. And I think kind of a, a, a fresh start, right? I mean, non-conference is over. Now you know it's league play. I think you kind of, in your mind, you separate the two a little bit. And I think that's maybe a good thing for this team right now. Yeah, were you talking volleyball or football? Volleyball. Sorry, I was Clean looking. slate, so off we go. Crypto King, by the way, before we get into that, I was yeah. like, he had surgery. He's not, he's oh, been good. one of our number one okay. chatters. And he uh, is back on the chat tonight. So I was reading what he had commented and I heard which, which team he said. But yeah, absolutely. I think they're ready for that. And we're going to hear from uh, Lexi Rodriguez coming up in the show. I think they're, you know, excited. And, and obviously, we've heard so many times how tough the Big Ten is. It's sometimes harder than to win a, a Big Ten title than a national championship. And so they know they got to be ready to roll. Well, I just, I'm anxious to see where the mindset is for this team. That they're not used to getting beat in consecutive matches. They have. Great teams that they play. Louisville's a really good team. At Stanford's, that's no piece of cake either. So it's not nothing to be ashamed of, but they're not used to that. They're in a different spot. And a young group with, it's a weird mix. You have the veterans and you have the young group. I'll just, I'm anxious to see their psyche tonight. Absolutely. And uh, we got a sneak peek of uh, John Baylor's interview with Coach Cook earlier, and he said it hasn't been for lack of effort. So, no. you know, that's that's good that it hadn't been that they're, not playing hard. They're playing hard. They're just, you know, not doing some of the things they need to do uh, to win those those matches. No football availability today. We will, the head coach will meet with the media tomorrow. Tomorrow night, we will have our football show. And inside linebackers coach Barrett Rude, one of the all-time great Husker black shirts, will be here for the hour tomorrow night. Uh, this team's getting ready for Sparty, who's ranked and yet un under a touchdown favorite over the Huskers. Somebody knows something, and I like that somebody knows something because I, as I've studied this and gotten more into my game prep for this one, Huskers, if they play well, have a real chance, I think, to win this game. We're going to be able to sit down with uh, Jeremiah Searles tomorrow for our weekly podcast, and, of course, nobody watches more film than that guy, and he was kind of starting to dive into uh, Michigan State today. But, you know, you and I talked about it. I just – I don't think Miami – I think, you know, as – they were a little beat up after week one after they just got smoked by Alabama. Derek King's not full full strength. So I don't know how good Miami is. We've obviously seen Northwestern isn't great and then the other opponents. I just I don't know how much you can really take away from the games that they've played, but also even in those games, their secondary has gotten torched. And we've seen how well Adrian's been throwing the ball the last uh, couple of weeks. So maybe a chance for some big plays for the wide receiver unit. Already talking about making making a change in Miami. Manny Diaz may be in trouble as their wow. head coach. So they've not gotten off to a good start. They got blasted by Bama, which there's no shame in that. But then the way Sparty came in and roughed them up, that, that's right. I, You know, part of me wonders, you know, I think that this team wasn't supposed to be 3-0. They're probably getting a lot of pats on the back this week and maybe feeling maybe they're better than they are. And so I, if the Huskers kind of keep that chip on their shoulder, I like I like the dynamics of that. Now we got to go out and do it. Huskers got to go out and do that. And again, Nebraska's been in two very hard-fought games that have come down to you know having the ball with a chance to win it at the end of the game or, or tie it. And so they've been in situations that Michigan State has not been in. If it just so happens to come down to a you know last-minute type of deal. But also, you know, we, we've talked a lot about this, too, just the messaging. Like, the, the black shirts got a lot of praise for how they played at Oklahoma, and yet they were far from satisfied. Felt like they watched the film, and they weren't – they're not even close to as good as they could be. So, to me, that bodes well if you're thinking about maybe there's a letdown. No, I think – you know, talking with the players and how, you know, they, they started, they watched the film from Oklahoma. They're not happy with some of the things they left on the table. To me, I think that speaks volumes of, of where this mindset is going into Michigan State as well. Buckle up, put that phone down. It's a reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Today is the first day of fall, and the Husker men's basketball team had their media day slash photo day today where they took their team pictures and did some other things. How about that? We're getting that close to college basketball getting cranked up. I'm excited. You know, we, we talked to the Coach Williams a couple weeks ago, and, it, you know, the countdown was on then for them. It's, what, the 28th, right? So right. once you kind of start preseason, I feel like it goes fast. And, you know, we have the, you know, night at PBA with G Herbo. G Herbo. And uh, yeah, so it kind of, and then you got exhibitions, and then it kind of just flies by, then all of a sudden it's it's time. So, um 
feel like the month of October kind of gets you to basketball season pretty quickly. Once you get to preseason, it's like, okay, almost there. It's going to be fun. So we, we're hoping to talk to Coach Hoiberg next week. we got a request in to see if we can get him. We haven't talked to him in months. So looking forward to catching up with the head coach. Great to hear from Coach Williams a couple of weeks ago. And, I, you know, I think the fan bases of both teams excited. Uh, the men have some interesting parts to it. The women have a lot of players back. Uh, so it should be a fun winter around here watching Husker basketball. All right. Um, we're going to have the Big Ten Blitz coming up here in a couple of minutes. Some interesting conference matchups this weekend. A couple of conference games. Also, maybe one of the biggest games in the country is Notre Dame and Wisconsin. They're going to play in Chicago at Soldier Field. We're going to preview that game in our Blitz. The Badgers. Badgers already had a bye week. They played two games and they got a bye week. To me, that's odd. I, I wouldn't want that. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't want more than a two-game sample size to really do a big dig into my own team. Yeah, I mean, I... I... It's just you don't know how much you know, I feel like, in, in two weeks in. I mean, because you go through fall camp, but then you don't really know what you have until you play that first game. But then, you know, that's kind of a weird game with Penn State. And again, right, opening di- uh, opening game, such a huge matchup. Didn't play well at all, really, in that one. And so, yeah, you probably still coaching staff probably still doesn't know exactly what kind of team they have yet with just two games in the interesting dynamic of this Notre Dame Wisconsin game is Notre Dame is quarterback by Jack Cohn who was at Wisconsin he was a starting quarterback two years ago there got beat out by Graham Mertz now he transfers to Notre Dame and now he his Irish teammates will face the Badgers in Soldier Field so that'll be one of the games that we get teed up here I'm interested to see how Notre Dame comes out because they haven't looked good either and they've barely squeak by some wins as well so I don't think they're a top 10 team I don't either I don't, I don't either they're good they're fine but yeah. they're not great but I don't know if I mean was Penn State's defense that good that Wisconsin couldn't score hardly at all I mean I, I don't know I I think it's more that Wisconsin's offense is not clicking I think that's really more of what it is yeah I don't that's what kind of makes me a little bit hesitant to just go all in on Wisconsin. I mean, because I do not think Notre Dame's that good, but I also don't think Wisconsin can score. So I agree. Now, the Badger defense, amazing. They are really, really good on that side of the football. I know what I'm going to be doing Saturday morning when we're hanging around the hotel ready for a night game is watching uh, that one. That one kicks off at 11 o'clock. So uh, that's one of the good things about night games. You can kind of sit back and watch a lot of the day game action and then go to the stadium and go to work. Yeah. And then the 11 a.m. games, you miss so many. And then flying back, too, we, we didn't have TVs on the, on the flight. Yeah, what, so. what was that all about? I don't know. I requested those. <laughs> they, did, they, didn't, they didn't happen. Uh, you, a, a big screen TV hanging over the, our seats to see all those yeah, games. Yeah, exactly. Uh, hey, Nebraska 811 says, go dig red. Before you dig, always call or click 811 to have your utility lines marked. It's free. It's easy. It's the law. It's the opening night of... Big Ten Volleyball Action. BTN has a match on right now, Illinois and Iowa. Uh, The Huskers will play the 8 o'clock match tonight with Northwestern. We'll have all the coverage here on the Huskers Radio Network. When we come back, we'll dive into this week's vision version of the Big Ten Blitz. Stay up to date with the most current and latest news by following the Huskers on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and more. These social media homes provide the fastest daily updates on everything surrounding Nebraska athletics, including game times, results, ticket promotions, prize giveaways, and more. Log on to also follow several sport-specific pages and Husker head coaches. Join today and interact with thousands of Husker fans around the world. Visit huskers.com slash social media to see all of our accounts. There is no place like Nebraska, and there's no place that treats you like home, like Sap Brothers. For 50 years, Sap Brothers has fueled America's heartland and been a reliable partner to local farms and Husker fans across Nebraska, providing the highest quality fuel, lubricants, and propane, servicing your farming equipment and welcoming guests into their travel centers. Visit www.sapbros.net. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Husker Athletics. Nebraskans are choosing chiropractic for better health. Why chiropractic? Because it is safe, drug-free, and a cost-effective treatment option for back and joint pain. Plus, all generations can benefit from natural chiropractic care. Choose chiropractic first for pain relief, nutrition, or to improve your mobility, athletic performance, or overall wellness. Make chiropractic your first choice for better health. Find a chiropractic physician near you at nebraskachiropractic.org. Get your life back with chiropractic. 
From vintage sneakers to bacon scented soap to water fountains for your pet, all can be had with a few simple clicks. Problem is, you never really know what you're going to get until they show up at your door. Introducing Ford Blue Advantage. It's used car buying that's built for you. Not only can you shop for used vehicles online, in person, or both, you can also test drive before you buy, so you know exactly what you're getting. Plus, get history reports, vehicle inspections, Ford warranties, and the expertise of factory trained techs. Visit FordBlueAdvantage.com today. Valley 365 is here, and the time is now to take your farming technology full circle. Valley 365 is the ultimate command center, the new single sign on platform that brings together our tried and true technology and streamlines your entire operation. Combining the best features of AgSense, Valley Scheduling, Valley VRI, and Valley Insights, Valley 365 is the next level solution for connected crop management. Leverage your data, make the most of your time, and own your tomorrow. Contact your Valley dealer today. Double espresso for Matt, large ice mocha for Greg, $2,022 for Katie. Oh, oops. Everybody's mind is on the Nebraska Lottery's Powerball's Rockin' 15 promotion. Until September 25th, buy a Powerball with PowerPlay ticket and enter for a chance to be one of 15 to win $2,022 and a chance to win $1 million. Sorry for the mix-up, Katie. Here's your latte. Forget the coffee. Where's my $2,022? Powerball top prize odds won in $292 million. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. You trained for this all year. Endless hours of cardio, conditioning, and weights. And now you are ready. Ready to trek back to your seat from the concession stand. Through the lines, lost fans, and that mascot who wants you to do a little dancey dance. All without spilling a drop of your ice-cold Bud Light. Welcome back to football, sports fans. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall at Zone 6 in Exarban Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Row townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. Great job, everyone. Printers, great coverage. Phones, quick pickups. Firewall, tough defense. And network, way to carry the whole team. Ever since Marco started calling our technology plays, we work smarter and our whole game is more streamlined. Marco's all-star services and support give us the winning edge. Find out what your technology could be saying at marconet.com. Addy Sports Bar and Grill is the place to watch Nebraska games this season. Locally owned and operated, Addy's is Omaha's premier sports bar with four locations in Elkhorn, Maple Street, Millard, and the new flagship Capital location in downtown Omaha. If it's Husker game day, it's on at Addy's. Addy Sports Bar and Grill is Omaha's official watch party spot with game day giveaways, prizes, fun, and more surprises later in the season. Addy's Sports Bar and Grill. See you there for the game. It's game on at Sid Dillon Buick GMC Cadillac in Fremont, featuring our winning combination of Buick SUVs and GMC trucks and SUVs. And as a GMC Business Elite dealer, we offer commercial vehicles for your business needs. For the convenient and easy way to shop for your next vehicle, just visit our Fremont location or check out our full inventory at Sid Dillon Buick GMC.com. You are what drives us. Dylan. We are professional grade. Hey, Husker fans, if you're looking for an exciting new career as part of your pandemic recovery, Iowa has over 75,000 job openings in industries such as healthcare, advanced manufacturing, construction, IT, and ag. IowaWorks.gov has more information about job openings, earn while you learn apprenticeships, and exciting training and scholarship opportunities. Find your next great job in Iowa. They've got a solid game plan, a bright future, and want you on their team www.iowaworks.gov Back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres Equipment, Nebraska's premier John Deere dealer with 27 locations across Nebraska and into Kansas. Acres, solutions for every field. Time for us to take a little spin around the Big Ten. Big Ten Blitz, Wisconsin. 
Here to talk about the Badgers, Colton Bartholomew of the Wisconsin State Journal. Wisconsin won and won. They had a bye week, early bye week last week. And Colton, what were some of the points of emphasis from the coaches during that bye week? Yeah, a lot of it was just, you know, recovery. You, you, you kind of forget that once the season starts that uh, an early bye week can kind of help out because you just got through the grind of a training camp, right? Then you go through two couple uh, physical games. So I think the recovery and then clean up some things up on offense, especially when you're talking about the red zone offense for the Badgers. Uh, I believe it's only six of, of 10 uh, red zone attempts have been uh, – turn into scores, and then that's way lower than Wisconsin's used to. So uh, I think those are the two big points of emphasis. And, you know, there's obviously the, the usuals of continuing to control the ball and, you know, try to get turnovers on defense. Hard to pick pick too much at the defense, right? I mean, they've just been phenomenal <laughs> the first two games. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, that's, that's – like I mentioned the turnovers, but that's almost nitpicking, right, yeah. where they're getting off the field in three plays anyway. So – uh, the way that Jack Sanborn, the, the senior inside linebacker, one of their best players, has kind of described it as, you know, yeah, we're doing a good job, but we could be doing great, right? Like that's the, the next step they want to take, you know, flipping games with some turnovers, maybe scoring on their own. You know, that's something they've been talking about since last season when the offense has struggled a little bit, taking things into their hands. So uh, I know that's a focus they're trying to, you know, really dial in on. And the big thing that I've heard from defensive linemen is they've, set a goal for themselves in the room of how many you know fumbles they can force and you know disruptive plays they can make and they haven't had any uh, to their count yet they've had some sacks but they haven't had any of the plays they want to see yet so I think that's maybe that next step that they're pushing for on defense all right up next Notre Dame in Chicago it's the Jack Cone Bowl I guess how, how much has that <laughs> come up this week around the Badger group uh, I would say an annoying amount. <laughs> I mean, I, I felt bad because, you know, as a reporter, you've got to ask because it's a big storyline. But then there's, you know, 15 of us all asking relatively similar questions of everybody. So it was kind of a, a theme throughout Monday's press conferences. And I talked to guys, you know, kind of after everything died down and they all kind of knew it was coming. And it, it's tough because there are a lot of guys on this team that are still really good friends of Jack Cohen and they, they want him to do well, just not on this Saturday. Right. They, they just say that, you know, we, we want him to have a great season except for, you know, when he plays us and we, we want to win that game too. So it's kind of weird. And it's one of those kind of rare exceptions. I feel like to the rule in college football now where, you know, somebody transfers and they're jaded and they think they didn't get the opportunity from the coaching staff. And I think everybody kind of knew the score here where the Badgers coaches felt like they had to move on. Uh, to Graham Mertz to get him developed and then hopefully get him to his ceiling. And then Jack Holm still had good football in him, clearly. So uh, I think both sides kind of just felt like they, they needed to separate and move on, and that's kind of what happened. What kind of game do you expect to see on Saturday? Yeah, I, I think it's going to be low scoring. I really do. I, I, I just don't see explosiveness coming from this Wisconsin offense yet. Uh, if, it, if it comes, I think it's got to come in the run game. Uh, and then I think on defense – the one thing that the Badgers are going to try to force you to do is they're going to make you beat them deep. And we've seen Notre Dame do that. So if you can limit the big plays of the Badger defense, you would think it's going to be tough for Notre Dame to really grind out drives against you. So I think this is going to be pretty low scoring, one, t one score type of game. I think Wisconsin is going to be able to pull out a close one, maybe by three or four points, but uh, I just think it's going to be kind of a low-scoring, defensive, grind-it-out type of game. Colton, the game's neutral site, Chicago, Soldier Field. What, what's the crowd breakup going to be? Do you think it's 50-50? Is there more Badger fans? What's your guess? Yeah, it's going to lean a little bit toward Notre Dame. Uh, uh, I think it was Vivid Seats just put out a, uh, a graphic about that. It looks about 60-40 Notre Dame. And that's, a, I would say, a little bit to be expected just because Chicago's a Notre Dame type of town and a lot more alums there, I think, of, of Notre Dame than in the, uh, in the Wisconsin section there. So uh, it's going to lean a little bit, more, little bit more toward Notre Dame, but I don't think enough that it's going to be a drastic effect on the game. I think in a couple of years when they get that game in Lambeau, I believe that's 2026, they're going to play up in Lambeau. there will be a bigger crowd for Wisconsin at that one. Should be a good one. 11 a.m. Saturday on Big Fox, Notre Dame, Wisconsin. Colton Bartholomew of the Wisconsin State Journal. Colton, we appreciate it. Thank you. Anytime, guys. Big Ten Blitz, Purdue. Here to talk about the Boilermakers, Mike Carmen of the Lafayette Journal Courier. Purdue coming off of a loss at Notre Dame on Saturday, 27 13. Mike, 
other than the fact that the big drum couldn't get in the stadium, how, how did the Boilers stack up in your eyes in that game? Well, it's going to be a tough matchup uh, just because it's the best team they, they have faced up to this point, and they've got NFL prospects across the board on both sides of the ball. You know, they struggled to run the ball, which I thought, uh, and they struggled to really produce some big plays. Uh, but they had some opportunities early. They had good field position, but only got three points out of it on a couple drives. Uh, there were a couple fourth downs that they needed to convert and stop Notre Dame on that may have swung the game. But, you know, overall, the defense is playing better than it did last year. It kept them in the game, and that, that just needs to continue uh, as, as Purdue starts Big Ten season coming up this week. Mike David Bell's one of my favorite players in the league. What's his status right now? Uh, he's still in concussion protocol. Uh, I would say the best case scenario, it's a game time decision. Uh, I, 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 it's going to be hard right now to determine whether he's going to play or not. They need him because um, they, they lost his backup as well in that game, Rashawn Rice. Uh, so they're down a couple of receivers, you know, potentially there, but they need him. I mean, they, they just need that, that playmaking ability of, uh, of what he can do and, uh, the attention that he brings that opens up uh, some of the offense for some of the other players. So probably not going to know till till Saturday close to kickoff. All right, turning the page to this week, conference game for Purdue as they host Illinois. Uh, what's, what grabs you as you line this matchup up for us? Well, I mean, you know, Illinois got off to that good start against Nebraska, and uh, they they haven't maintained it. Uh, you know, they, they lost to San Antonio, lost to – Virginia lost to Maryland. Uh, quarterback play has been suspect. Uh, the defense, I think, hung in there last week against Maryland. Didn't let them in the end zone a whole lot. Uh, and, you know, Purdue's going to have to get some big plays against them and, and protect the quarterback and find a running game uh, somewhere along the line, at least in short yardage situations, to, to keep the ball and, and keep things moving. But, you know, it should be a close game. I mean, this is a Big Ten West matchup. You know, this is a very important game for Purdue. Uh, when you look at the rest of the schedule, you know, a chance to get off to a 3-1 and one start, and then they get Minnesota next week, which, you know, a chance to get off to a 4-1 and one start. And, you know, this is these are a couple games that Purdue needs to win to, to really push their season forward. Mike, what have been some of the recent matchups like been like with Illinois? What, what kind of games have they been? Well, uh, last year over there, Purdue got out to a big lead then hung on late uh, to, to seal it. Two years ago, in a downpour, Illinois just came in and stomped on Purdue, which was probably one of the worst losses, not from a score standpoint, but just from a, a looking at it standpoint in, in Jeff Rom uh, era. But, you know, overall, Purdue has, has done well against Illinois, especially over there. Um, so they've been close games. There is a tro This is a trophy game uh, that a lot of people don't know about. It's for the Cannon. Uh, the cannon is no no bigger than my my thumb, but it's still for the cannon. Uh, so it is a trophy game. It's an important game, and you know these two schools are not separated by by a whole lot of miles, just cornfields and and back roads. Uh, so uh, it's a big game from that standpoint. Illinois at Purdue, two thirty Central on Big Ten Network. Mike Carmen of the Journal Courier with us. Mike, as always, we appreciate it. Thank you very much. Big Ten Blitz, Rutgers. Here to talk about the Scarlet Knights, the voice of Rutgers football, Chris Carlin, and Rutgers off to a 3-0 start, and I'm just amazed. Greg Schiano's done it once. It looks like he's doing it again there in Piscataway. Chris, what's your early impression of this team? Well, listen, Greg, they're playing with, uh, you know, an awful lot of impressive traits right now. They're playing with a great toughness uh, that I love to see. Um, I I think, you know, getting a good road win against Syracuse uh, really helped. And then, you know, you see them uh, not let up on the pedal at all. They had the, the six-ranked uh, FCS team in Delaware come in this past week and uh, were able to handle them. And that's, that's a team that has a lot of um, FBS talent on it. So I think that the, the start so far, you have to feel pretty good about and just the mere fact that they don't have one turnover in three games has been just absolutely massive for them. Uh, they're a plus eight so far, and uh, taking care of the football when you're a team like Rutgers right now, you cannot um, afford to make mistakes like that, and they haven't done it. Yeah, that's called winning football, doing that. Chris, coaches don't like distractions. You've had the paintball thing this week. How big of a distraction is it on, and, and will it be on the field 
off the field, but on the field with the, the Michigan game coming up here in a couple of days? Well, yeah, it's hard to say if it's really been one. I, I don't know that I would think that it has. Max Melton's a really good player, and he's made a lot of plays uh, in the first year plus. And um, it's obviously not a good thing to have happen. Um, I don't know how it's going to get resolved at this point other than, you know, the guys are suspended for the moment. But don't worry about distractions. I, I think they were able to have that happen early in the week. It's an area where they're particularly deep. And, look, the other thing, too, is you have to send a message right away. And Max is a really good player, and you're not going to um, – you know, bend any rules or anything and, you know, decide that we're going to reserve judgment on anything until it happens. It was send a stern message right away. You mess up, you're not going to play. And so you're, you're going to be suspended, and that's what happened here. Chris, how much confidence can Rutgers take away from the fact that last year's matchup with Michigan was that overtime thriller and that they were an inch here or there or a play here or there from beating the Wolverines? They've gotta, that's got to give them confidence, I would think, going into this week. Yeah, I, listen, I think it would, but, you know, uh, Coach Shano said this week that um, he really looks at last year as just somewhat fake, you know, considering what happened with COVID and everybody and how they were affected and different players not playing at different times. So it's not that he's taking away from their, you know, what they achieved in year one, but he looks at Michigan a lot differently this year. And they have – run the football exceptionally well through their first three games. I mean, Blake Corum has got 400 yards rushing in three games already. So um, I don't think there's any mistaking uh, the abilities that they have. And the other thing to remember, too, is Rutgers got out to a 17 nothing lead in that game last year. And Michigan had Cade McNamara come on at halftime and threw for four touchdowns. And it's a big part of the reason why they won that game. So, um that I think there's confidence out of it, but I think it's also like you understand what's on the other side of the field. Big Ten opener for both. 2.30 Central on ABC. Chris Carlin of the Rutgers Network. Chris, appreciate it. Have a great call on Saturday. Appreciate it, Greg. Thanks. Chris and all of our contributors appear with us on our Sports Nightly Hotline, which is brought to you by the Woodhouse Auto Family Shop. Woodhouse first, 18 brands, 16 convenient locations. Simplified car buying to save you time. Shop finance and buy it online at woodhouse.com. All right, phone lines back open for you, 402-413-2400. Call or text. Jessica will rejoin me next. Big Ten Blitz. For Greg, $2,022 for Katie. Oh, oops. Everybody's mind is on the Nebraska Lottery's Powerball's Rockin' 15 promotion. Until September 25th, buy a Powerball with PowerPlay ticket and enter for a chance to be one of 15 to win $2,022 and a chance to win $1 million. Sorry for the mix-up, Katie. Here's your latte. Forget the coffee. Where's my $2,022? Powerball top prize odds, one in 292 million. If you're driven by an adventurous heart, you're in luck. The 2021 Subaru Outback shares your spirit. It will take you as far as you want to explore with standard symmetrical all-wheel drive. It'll get you off the beaten path with 8.7 inches of ground clearance. More than Toyota RAV4 or Honda Passport. It's the best Outback ever. The 2021 Subaru Outback. Go where love takes you. Comparison based on competitor information for manufacturer websites as of July 2020. Visit to Toast Subaru at 27th Street and Jamie Lane in Lincoln or to ToastSubaru.com. The game isn't just about winning or losing. It's about the snacks they share after they've used up all their energy in the field. It's the early morning practice before school and staying late after to get a couple more kicks in. It's the pride they feel for their team and the determination to always keep improving. Sure, the game isn't always about winning or losing, but when they've won the big game and celebration is in full swing, there's only one thing left for you to do. Get them home safe. Buckle up in back. Paid for by NDOT Highway Safety Office. Whether you compete on the court, at the track, on the field, or in the field, Winning isn't just a goal, it's a mindset shaped, honed, and defined throughout the season. That's why farmers pushing themselves to be the best plant DeKalb brand corn. Wherever you compete, winning has roots. Perform at your best with DeKalb. Always read and follow grain marketing and all other stewardship practices and pesticide label directions. Momentum. It's building at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln with game-changing work in precision agriculture, nanoscience, 
and digital humanities. We're unlocking mysteries in brain research, solving the impossible with remote surgery using robots, and we're creating bold futures with world-leading research in early childhood education. We don't slow down, and we're not letting up. We are Nebraska. Walk these fields for 85 years. Grow deeper roots here. Know what thrives here. Bring in world-class genetics and innovative traits like chrome triple stack corn hybrids and Enlist E3 soybeans. Refine it through pure local know-how and expertise. Do all of that, and the only thing left is the right seed. Hogemeyer. Learn more at therightseed.com. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. From sprains and stitches to sore throats and sinus infections, when it's care that can't wait, count on CHI Health Clinic Priority Care. Simply walk in seven days a week from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. You'll get the quality care you need without an appointment, and you'll never pay more than a regular primary care visit. Get in, get out, and get on with your day. Find a location near you at chihealth.com slash priority care. Want to get all the latest Husker news straight to your phone? Need to be the first of your friends to get the scoop on all things Huskers? Sign up for text alerts from Nebraska Athletics. Text Huskers to 83200 to get game time notifications and updates, breaking news, special ticket offers, and more straight to your phone. All the Husker news is just a quick text away. Just text Huskers to 83200. Standard text messaging rates apply and may vary by carrier. You could win a 2021 Ford F-150 XL four-wheel drive Super Crew truck from the Woodhouse Auto family this season. If the Huskers return the first or second half opening kick for a touchdown, Woodhouse will give away an F-150. New contestants will be chosen each week. For details on how to enter the Woodhouse Auto Family Kickoff Contest and official rules, go to woodhousekickoff.com. That's woodhousekickoff.com. Walk these fields for 85 years. Grow deeper roots here. Know what thrives here. Bring in world-class genetics and innovative traits like chrome triple stack corn hybrids and Enlist E3 soybeans. Refine it through pure local know-how and expertise. Do all of that, and the only thing left is the right seed. Hogemeyer. Learn more at therightseed.com. Here is a before winter to-do list from JTEC Construction. Let's start with windows. Triple pane window technology has saved homeowners countless dollars on heating and cooling bills. Siding serves a crucially important purpose, protecting your home and insulating it from adverse weather conditions. And don't forget about your roof. Designing your roof should be simple and painless, and JTEC offers several payment plan options. One more thing on your to-do list called JTEC Construction, the official exterior experts of the Huskers. Addy Sports Bar and Grill is the place to watch Nebraska games this season. Locally owned and operated, Addy's is Omaha's premier sports bar with four locations in Elkhorn, Maple Street, Millard, and the new flagship Capital location in downtown Omaha. If it's Husker game day, it's on at Addy's. Addy's Addy Sports Bar and Grill is Omaha's official watch party spot with game day giveaways, prizes, fun, and more surprises later in the season. Addy Sports Bar and Grill, see you there for the game. We're back inside of our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres Equipment, Nebraska's premier John Deere dealer with 27 locations across Nebraska and into Kansas, Acres Solutions for every field. Phone lines are open for you, 402-413-2400. Either call or fire off a text on our text line. Uh, for the coin toss, Michigan State's going to honor Mike Sadler and Sam Foltz. The coin has pictures of Sam on one side, Mike on the other. That is true. That is Laverne letting us know that uh, those two former kickers were tragically killed in that car accident a few years ago. This is the first time Nebraska has played at Michigan State since that happened, Mike Sadler was the punter for Sparty and, of course, Sam Foltz, the Husker punter. They did play here in Lincoln the year after that happened, and they had a big ceremony for him here. Interestingly enough, I saw a picture today of 
kind of that celebration, kind of that uh, thing that they did before the game here a couple of years ago. Coaches and some of the players were around, and in the background of the picture was Will Pristup, who at the time was on the Michigan State team. Wow! Now he's the Oscar punter, so he switched sides. But uh, that was that was a hard hard time when that happened. So Michigan State first time they've had a chance to have Nebraska in town. So uh, there will be that on a Saturday night. I remember just um, yeah. I mean it it shook the whole college football world because the the kicking. Uh, world is so tight and you know it's like everybody knows everybody they, they a lot of times they're going to camps together again i was at oklahoma at the time but the um kicker there knew them well and and was really really devastated about it so it's just such a tight-knit uh, community and so yeah it was devastating but neat that they're going to honor them uh, yeah. for the first time that they've since the first time they've met up there in east lansing the i was at the omaha airport getting ready to fly to chicago for big 10 media days and then then it it was popping. You know, Twitter was popping, and the phones blowing up. You're like, what's what in the world's going on here? Because it happened on a Saturday night. This was a Sunday midday that I was flying up there, and Nebraska ended up not coming. They didn't send their group to Big Ten media days, and rightfully so. I mean, everybody was devastated. Sam was a really popular player, good friends with Jeremiah. So Jeremiah's going to be down there on that sideline on Saturday night. We'll have to ask him about that uh, in the podcast tomorrow about um, just. The, the honoring, but also what, yeah. what Sam meant to the, the team that year, especially. Yeah, so a good, good uh, nod from Michigan State to do that. And um, you know, you're right, the kicking for it's kind of a fraternity. Those guys, mm -hmm. they hang together because they're, they're unlike anybody else on a football team. They're not big, massive guys. They're usually smaller guys that maybe grew up playing soccer, doing that type of thing. And so they, are, they all kind of walk in the same, uh, same realm. And so they, they are. They were really tight. And, uh, so, yeah, Sam, Sam has missed to this day here in Lincoln. 14 years ago today, the I'm a man Mike Gundy. speech from Mike Gundy. You probably remember that, right? I do. I remember <laughs> that. And it's still just, gosh, it's crazy how big it is every single year. It's the anniversary of and when he turned 50, you know, they made a big deal about it. And <laughs> yeah. He's been the head coach for a long time. He has long been. Long time. You know, he had the mullet going for a while. Then he still? Or did he cut no, that? No, he cut off the mullet. Um, but, yeah, they're, boy, they ended up winning the other night. But I think Oklahoma State fans are uh, not happy with how the team looks this year. Undefeated. I think they're ranked. Yeah. one of the polls. Uh, yeah, so it's, um, yeah, that 14 years ago today was the I'm a man speech. I think Jenny Carlson. It was. Well, ask yep. that question. Jenny and I go way back. She's a, a great reporter. She's awesome. I really like her. Did you see her on Saturday? I didn't. Was she there? She was there, yep. Dang it. I should have gone down and found her. I did not see her. So I went down that level a couple times, but I didn't go to the bottom. She was probably on the lower level. I was right. up on the upper top thing. So 14 years ago. Man, that, mm -hmm. where did time go? That doesn't seem like it was that long ago that he... And, hey, he was defending a player. He was mad that a player of his had gotten taken some shots in the media, and he was standing up for his player. That kind of thing plays pretty well in the locker room. Players like to know their coach has their back. Yeah, I think I remember that kind of happened after that. I mean, they, they lost that game, but I kind of remember that maybe a, a little bit of a turn. I can't really remember exactly, but, yeah, it was crazy how much that blew up. And, you know, kind of on both sides, like you said, oh, well, he's sticking up for his player, but, oh, that was way too much. Like, what's he doing? Kind of a, it was really split on uh, how people felt about that. But it's, it's yeah, every year, like clockwork, you can expect you know, to see. The anniversary. It's blowing up on Twitter. Yeah. I'm a man. I'm 40. 14's not really an anniversary to celebrate too much. 15, yeah, maybe. And when uh, he turns 60. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, because I think be, he just turned 50 like a couple of years ago, maybe. Right. Well, he'd be 14 years ago. He'd probably be 40, 53 right now, or 53, maybe turning 54. Yeah, already, so right uh, when he turned 60, it's going to be a huge deal again. Yeah, you bumped into his brother while we were down in Norman. Yes, yep. Uh, Kale was there. He was on. Yeah. Uh, he came up to the press box, and he was talking a lot about the uh, transition for Oklahoma going to the SEC, and um, I guess Oklahoma State has quite a bit of walk-ons, kind of a little bit like here, and just kind of asking about how many walk-ons Nebraska has, but... Yeah, um, it saw quite a few people that I knew. Speaking of standing up for their players, I, I really like what Scott Frost has done for Connor Culp. Yep. He's been asked about him a couple times. He goes, we believe in Connor. We're, we're not giving up on him. He's in a rough patch, but we're, you know, we're there for him. I, I, think, I think Coach Frost has said all the right things.
because it has been a rough couple of weeks for Connor Culp. Yeah, and I mean, I've said it, and I'll continue to say it. I mean, watching him down there on the sidelines, I mean, he he was not okay. I mean, he was devastated, and, you know, it's just such a mental thing, and you can't, you got to tread lightly there when, you know, probably they need him again, pro I would imagine. You know, I don't know what the game plan is moving forward about. I mean, I surely he's, I know they opened up the competition, but it's probably going to, uh, he's probably going to have another opportunity in game and you have to, you know, consider that when you're talking about confidence and, um, you know, the, the mental aspect of things. If he's the best one during the week, I think you got to keep running him out there. I mean, I think if he proves to be the best one now, uh, other people can say, well, he's not doing it in games and that's true. Uh, but if the coaches feel like he still gives the best one they've got on the roster, they've, they've got to continue to roll with him. This season, share Valentino's tailgater tradition with our big red double jumbo deal. and Get one, two one-topping jumbo pizzas for only $17.79 each. Order yours online at valentinos.com. Valentino's the official pizza of the Huskers. Go big red. 402-413-2400. That's the number if you want to dot us up with a comment or question or fire off a text. We're back with our final segment of this hour next. Stay up to date with the most current and latest news by following the Huskers on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and more. These social media homes provide the fastest daily updates on everything surrounding Nebraska athletics, including game times, results, ticket promotions, prize giveaways, and more. Log on to also follow several sport-specific pages and Husker head coaches. Join today and interact with thousands of Husker fans around the world. Visit huskers.com slash social media to see all of our accounts. Valley 365 is here, and the time is now to take your farming technology full circle. Valley 365 is the ultimate command center, the new single sign-on platform that brings together our tried and true technology and streamlines your entire operation. Combining the best features of AgSense, Valley Scheduling, Valley VRI, and Valley Insights, Valley 365 is the next level solution for connected crop management. Leverage your data, make the most of your time, and own your tomorrow. Contact your Valley dealer today. You always dreamed of owning your own farm. Now you're living your dream, and it's time to pick the tractor that makes it all come together. Massey Ferguson has reinvented what compact and utility tractors can be and redefined what they do, making them easier to operate, more comfortable to drive, more versatile than ever. Massey Ferguson gives Nebraska farmers the power and performance to win in the field. Osceola Implement in Osceola, Nebraska, your locally owned Massey Ferguson dealer. Proud supporters of the Huskers and Nebraska farmers. From vintage sneakers to bacon-scented soap to water fountains for your pet, all can be had with a few simple clicks. Problem is, you never really know what you're going to get until they show up at your door. Introducing Ford Blue Advantage. It's used car buying that's built for you. Not only can you shop for used vehicles online, in person, or both, you can also test drive before you buy, so you know exactly what you're getting. Plus, get history reports, vehicle inspections, Ford warranties, and the expertise of factory-trained techs. Visit FordBlueAdvantage.com today. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall and Zone 6 in Exarbon Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Row townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. Score a game-winning drive when you buy your next vehicle at Sid Dillon Chevrolet. As a Chevrolet Business Elite dealer, we offer commercial vehicles, including medium-duty trucks and low-cap forwards. Whatever vehicle fits your needs, we're here to make the purchase process easy. Visit our Chevy locations in Blair, Crete, Fremont, or Wahoo. Plus, shop our full inventory at SidDillonChevy.com. You are what drives us. Sid Dillon. Chevy, find new roads. Welcome back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, brought to you by Acres Equipment, Nebraska's premier John Deere dealer. 27 locations across Nebraska and into Kansas. Acres Solutions for every field. Somebody just uh, texted me and said, hey, the, uh, um, the Huskers might be able to play Northwestern at Wrigley Field sometime in the, with this uh, 
big thing that happened today at Northwestern with a big contribution from their the Ryan family, which is their major supporter. They're going to do a major reno of their current stadium, and they're going to have to probably play a couple seasons away from uh, Ryan Field. It'd be kind of cool. Wrigley Field, awesome. Huskers, that'd be neat. Because they've played some at Yankee Stadium, right? They've they played have. a couple college games there. So yeah. the Northwestern just needs to play somebody that's going to bring fans. And Nebraska does that. Yep. Checks that So box. it would have to be a matchup that is a, an opponent that would basically be a... It won't be next year. Yeah. Ireland. Yep. How about that? And I wonder I'm, how the uh, negotiations have been going for Coach Cook on getting volleyball to play there, too. He's going to have to be asked that again at some point in time. Yep. I'm told that there's going to be some folks representing that game here for our game with Northwestern next week. Is that true? Yes. Yep. Um, and how great are uh, Irish accents. So hopefully we can get some interviews mm. of that. But, uh, yeah, they're going to be here kind of pump, pumping up the – the trip, uh, we were supposed to go earlier and kind of get some marketing materials, but with COVID. But, you know, there's so many cool things to do there mm -hmm. that if you wanted to plan, not just go for the game, but plan, you know, a vacation out of it. Just a lot of neat things that you can experience there. And I think, you know, that's part of them coming here, kind of, you know, pumping up what you can do if when you go to that game outside of just going to the game. There's a lot of seven, nine-day packages out there for sale, so I know a lot of people have looked into that and, and doing that. That's that's going to sneak up on us fairly quick. I mean, you're 11 months out. You're going to get through this football season, and you get through the holidays, and all of a sudden you're going to be about eight months away from that happening. Yeah, I mean, it gives you a great chance to go. Hopefully COVID's way in the rearview mirror yeah. by then, and uh, but it gives everybody a great opportunity to go to Europe and maybe do something you wouldn't normally think about going and doing. I think it would be great. I know the players are, are excited about it, too. I've heard a couple of them talk about just the experience of getting to go and, um, you know, when it changed and then the schedule changed. But I know the guys that are on this current team are, are looking forward to doing that as well. Should be. I mean, Nebraska's used it in recruiting for the last couple cycles because they thought they were going to be playing this past August. So that was one of the hooks. Here's a chance to go play in this game. Uh, it was supposed to be Nebraska a year ago. It was supposed In 2020, it was supposed to be Notre Dame and Navy playing over there, and that got wiped out. And then Nebraska's game with Illinois got wiped out. So maybe three, maybe the third time's the charm. That's when it's going to happen. Hopefully, hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah. Keep your... Uh, Keep your fingers crossed for that. All right, coming up next hour, we're going to have just a short hour or half hour, and then we're going to hand it off to JB and Lauren Cook-West for Husker Volleyball, opening night of Big Ten action. In fact, we've got Iowa-Illinois on right now. That's the match on BTN before Nebraska's match tonight. We're going to hear from Lexi Rodriguez, one of those fabulous freshmen for this team. Yeah, she's been, um, she's been great, and, and they've really talked to her. She played for Team USA this summer, which I think um, you know gave her a lot of confidence. She's talked about that, and then... Um, has earned the starting job at Libero, and um, yeah, she's and she's got a fun personality too. So uh, excited to kind of get to cover her career a little bit more as we go. But you'll get to hear from her as they uh, get set for uh, tonight's match, big look, one. Look forward to that. Again, the volleyball show tomorrow night, hour one. Our football show in hour two tomorrow night. We'll have Bear Rude, uh, the all-time leading tackler for Husker football. Inside linebackers coach will be here. Uh, so we're looking forward to chatting with him tomorrow night. We did have a text earlier wanting to know when the volleyball show was. Thought they missed it. Well, you didn't. It wasn't last night because they traveled. So it's tomorrow night. So you'll hear the coach tomorrow night. You'll hear the coach here in about 40 minutes on his pregame show coming up here in just a little bit. Buckle up. Put that phone down. It's a reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. That's going to do it for hour one here of Sports Island on a Wednesday night ahead of Husker Volleyball coming up with 8 o'clock first serve. We've got another 30 minutes to come, including a great conversation that Jessica had with Lexi Rodriguez headed your way here in the next few minutes. Back with one hour down, another hour to go, and don't go away. Come on back here on Sports Nightly. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Shop Woodhouse first for all of your pre-owned vehicle needs. We offer a variety of quality used makes and models across 16 different locations. You can shop with confidence knowing our pre-owned vehicles complete a comprehensive inspection upon arrival. Visit us for a test drive today or online anytime at Woodhouse.com. Making your car buying experience better. This is Woodhouse. 
Sports Bar and Grill is the place to watch Nebraska games this season. Locally owned and operated, Addie's is Omaha's premier sports bar with four locations in Elkhorn, Maple Street, Millard, and the new flagship Capital location in downtown Omaha. If it's Husker game day, it's on at Addie's. Addie's Sports Bar and Grill is Omaha's official watch party spot with game day giveaways, prizes, fun, and more surprises later in the season. Addie's Sports Bar and Grill. See you there for the game. Hey, Husker fans. If you're looking for an exciting new career as part of your pandemic recovery, Iowa has over 75,000 job openings in industries such as healthcare, advanced manufacturing, construction, IT, and ag. IowaWorks.gov has more information about job openings, earn while you learn apprenticeships, and exciting training and scholarship opportunities. Find your next great job in Iowa. They've got a solid game plan, a bright future, and want you on their team. www.iowaworks.gov. Here we go again. The celebrating, the accolades. Ever since we added Marco to our team, our technology can't lose. Day after day, success after success, Marco's made our business IT a force to be reckoned with. The only drawback of being technology all-stars is keeping champagne away from the electronics. <sighs> Find out what your technology could be saying at marconet.com.
live inside Memorial Stadium. This is the Huskers Radio Network. Rolling to the right side as Demorat being pressured, throws downfield, passes intercepted, picked off by the Cornhuskers. It's Deontay Williams, second pick of the day, third turnover forced by the Blackshirts, and Nebraska will take over. Third and five from the seven. Pistol set, two wide outs left, Lieber to the near side. In motion is two ray, snap back, turn, run the option to the near side. Avery pitches it back to some more into the five. He is in. Touchdown, Nebraska. It's Sports Nightly. All the Huskers, all the time. Sports Nightly is presented by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who reminds you to buckle up and put the phone down. Here are your hosts, Greg Sharp and Jessica Cootie on the Huskers Radio Network. Yeah, thank you. Welcome back. We have a short little time with you here this hour before we hand it off to John Bader and Lauren Cook-West for Husker Volleyball as they begin league action tonight as they take on the Cats of Northwestern up in Evanston. And we'll be hearing from Lexi Rodriguez here in just a couple of minutes. I think this team tonight play might play with some edge to them. That's kind of my feel. I really do, too. I mean, I was kind of thinking about that. Went out to practice yesterday. We're supposed to do an interview with Lexi after practice, but, um, you know, they ran a little long. There were lots of players that were staying late, getting extra work in, and you can just kind of tell there's a different feel, a little bit tenser there in, in practice. I bet they come out on fire. I, I bet it's a good performance tonight. You know, you, uh, nobody likes to get beat any time, and the last three matches did not go the way that this team wanted to, but they were all ranked teams. And they're all non-conference. So kind of a new beginning tonight with league play. And John Cook's always said that's one of their goals, win the conference. He thinks it's harder to win the conference than it is win the national title, as good as the league is. I got to tell you, I'm excited to see some Big Ten volleyball. But, yeah, you're going to hear Lexi talk about that. You know, the, it's always a tough non-conference challenge, right, with this ne Nebraska volleyball team. But they feel battle-tested and ready to go. I mean, yes, drop some matches that they did not want to. You don't want to go out that way. But had some different looks, feel prepared, feel ready. You know, you, you throw those freshmen into the fire like that. They'd never, that have never played college volleyball, don't know what it's like to compete at this level yet. You know, they they learned a lot, grew a lot. So I'm excited to see how that translates into Big Ten play. Certainly were tested, yeah. right? I mean, they've, they've been through some pretty good battles with uh, the schedule they played to yep. now. Yeah, and I think figured out, you know, some of the things that Coach Cook is looking for and, and, rotating around you have some of those players playing in different spots and figuring out where they fit and where they're comfortable but also you know just all the little things that coach cook expects from his teams when you're out on the court but you know he said in the press conference on monday gonna get a lineup and stick to it so it's going to be interesting to see which lineup comes out there to start this thing tonight sure is right that's kind of what i'm wanting to see what he, he's probably trimmed the rotation down who who made the cut who didn't and, hey, there are going to be some hurt feelings, I'm guessing, because everybody wants to play. But uh, and, and he said at his press conference, too, he said, nobody can say they didn't get a chance. Right. Everybody's been given ample opportunity to show what they can do. And he said he worked multiple combinations. So it'll be interesting. One of the players who I think will still be in the rotation, you had a chance to catch up with before they traveled to Chicago. Yeah, Lexi Rodriguez, boy, they have loved her. She has come in and... Um... As he said over and over again, she is by far the best passer in the gym, which how many times you hear Coach Cook talking about, that's what's going to get you on the court, how well you pass. And so freshman has not been, you know, the moment really has not been too big for her. She is, um, has talked a lot about how these upperclassmen has, have really embraced the freshman. But, yeah, so she had to call in yesterday because uh, we, we couldn't quite get to her at practice the other day, but called in um, and I got a chance to visit with her leading up to this one tonight. We welcome in a freshman libero, Lexi Rodriguez, or Roddy, as her team likes to call her. Roddy, how's that nickname for you? Uh, Coach Cook said if you got a nickname, you're doing well over there at Devaney. Yes, definitely became very popular. <laughs> well, but there's uh, Lexi's son and then Lexi Rodriguez, so it makes it easier, right? They, uh, they just all call you Roddy? Yeah, there's never any confusion. It, it makes it a lot easier. Awesome. Well, let's uh, talk about what's the transition been like for you um, getting right in there and, and earning the starting job. And Coach Cook is really um, saying your praises about, you know, your passing. You're the best passer in the gym. How have you gone about kind of setting yourself up for that? Yeah, so I think that all the, like, upperclassmen and everything did a really good job with 
when all of us six freshmen came in just rem reminding us that it doesn't matter that we're freshmen and if we want to have a role on this team like we got to go out there and like show what we can do and so I think that really helped a lot of us just go in there with a lot of confidence and help us kind of take over some of those starting spots. Yeah, there's, um, you know, obviously a lot of talent on this team, and Coach Cook has been, um, you know, rotating the lineup quite a bit. What's the transition been like for you and your fellow freshmen kind of adjusting? You guys have played some really tough teams here to close out non-conference play. Yeah, it's been, it's been good. I think um, at times it's kind of tough with the lineup changing, but I think overall, like, everyone's, the competition in the gym is really pushing everyone to like be at their best all the time. So it's really bringing out the best in people. So I think it's been a really good um, like non-conference season. And I think we're ready to get into even harder work for the Big Ten season. Yeah. So what is the um, kind of overall feeling of this team right now? You know, it's not normal for uh, Nebraska volleyball to lose three matches in a row. And I know you guys are still kind of working some things out and, and trying to figure out the lineup, but uh, what did you guys kind of take away from that? Um, I think we just learned that, like, our team is very new, and it's not going to – the chemistry is not going to be there right from the start, and that's okay, but that we just got to keep working and fix some things and that we can control in order to make our team like even better and prepare ourselves to win those big games down the road. Yeah, that's so important to remember is that, you know, it takes time for a team to build chemistry and even a, a big team, it's even harder. Um, how close do you feel like you guys are to kind of working that chemistry out? I think uh, really close. I think it's been a, I feel like it's the preseason, like, has went by really fast, like faster than we all expected it to. And so now, like, we kind of have to move things along, but we are really close. And I think that's what helps us with, like, the transition of new lineups is that we all love each other. And at the end of the day, like, we just want to win. And so I think coming into this Big Ten season, that'll really, like, show that, like, whoever's on the court is just going to go out there and try and beat the other team. And we're all going to try and do it together. Yeah, and obviously the Big Ten conference play is uh, no joke. Uh, what have uh, the upperclassmen kind of told you? What have you guys kind of uh, learned going into it as you're uh, set to kind of kick off Big Ten play uh, coming up tonight? Yeah, so Coach, like even yesterday, was like the first season's over. Like it's time for like the second season, like clean slate. Nothing that all the losses are in the past, and it's time to like focus on this season, which is the Big Ten season. And it's going to be tough, and we're going to have to win big, like on the road games and win big home games. So I think it's going to take a lot of work, but I definitely think we have the ability to do that. Visiting with freshman Alexi Rodriguez, how prepared do you guys feel for Big Ten play, being that you did have such a, non, a challenging non-conference schedule? I think we're very prepared. We've seen lots of tough matches, and we've obviously seen some losses. So I think all that has really prepared us for this upcoming Big Ten season. You talked earlier about the, um, the freshmen that have – been able to get in here and, and play a lot. What is it um, about you guys that you guys have kind of got in there and fought and, and kind of earned your right to be out on the court? Just the entire freshman class. Yeah, I think our passion and love for the game, like we just want to be out there and compete. It doesn't matter at what position. Like you've seen lots of people or lots of my fellow classmates like play different positions. So I think at the end of the day, we all just want to go out there, compete, and beat the other team. And so I think that's what's had a lot of us, like, on the court. All right. What, uh, what's the keys uh, to uh, facing Northwestern? I know you guys have probably already looked at some of the film. Uh, what's the keys to getting a win tonight? Um, I think it's, at the end of the day, it's just going to be playing Nebraska volleyball, doing what we know how to do, and... We haven't really done that in a while, so just 
really focusing on the things we know how to do, which is like serve and pass and floor defense and all that. And if we can do that, I think we will be just fine. I agree with you, Lexi. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, best of luck tonight. Thank you. She's got a fun personality, and you can tell Roddy, uh, as Coach Cook says, if you've, if you've got nicknames over there, it's a good thing. The more nicknames you have, the, the better you're performing over there. Yeah. Well, let's we'll, we'll see what she can do and her teammates can do tonight. Again, we're just a few minutes away from handing it off to, to JB and to Lauren Cook-West. Hey, our Sports Highlight Hotline, brought to you by the Woodhouse Auto family. Shop Woodhouse first, 18 brands, 16 convenient locations, simplified car buying to save you time, shop finance, and buy online at woodhouse.com. Uh, here are Acres Broadcast Center. We look out over the, the new football building that's going up and you know, the, the moving dirt. They're starting to put things, more things in the ground. There's no steel going upward yet, but they're certainly laying a lot of things in the ground to get the foundation set for that. We know that college sports is so much of an arms race, uh, so much so that this story just made my jaw drop today, Jessica. This is from Northwestern. The Ryan family... And it's the Ryan fan, It's Ryan Field, the home of the of the Wildcats. They made today a four hundred and eighty million dollar gift to Northwestern. It's called the We Will campaign. It's the largest gift in the history of school. I would hope so. Wow! My goodness, uh, it's going to go towards the redevelopment of their football stadium. It's a multi-year construction process, according to Northwestern Athletics. This is going to be so big. Their stadium is really, really old and needs a lot of work. Um, this is, they're probably going to move their football team to play at Soldier Field where the Bears play probably for two seasons to basically gut their current football facility. But $480 million from one person, one family. And it's, it, is it the facility, it's all sports that they're building or? This is mostly football. Okay. Because they've already done a lot. The family's already done a lot. They just redid their basketball arena a few years mm -hmm. ago. They redid their baseball ballpark. They put up a new football facility that sits right on the lake. I mean, literally, you look out the window, and there's Lake Michigan. It's gorgeous. Now this is for the stadium. Unbelievable. Wow. Yeah. 480. Man, but Northwestern doesn't bring many fans anyways. It's going to be an empty Bears playing at the Bears stadium. It's it going to be, be empty. Yikes. But, you know, I think that's what's great about this facility that's going up. I mean, it is, you know, primarily football when you're talking about the locker rooms and some of those facilities. But, you know, the training table is going to be immaculate and how important that's been to, you know, recruiting and making sure that all the sports are involved with that. And that's been a huge part of that family type atmosphere. And so when we were at Oklahoma, of course, you know, again, just coming from there, had a lot of people ask me about the facilities here. And, you know, the even the gymnastics coach has asked me about, you know, the gymnastics facility at Devaney. And that's impressive, and I, I think Nebraska is about to set themselves up for everybody to start trying to catch them for a while. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's just it is. It's unbelievable. I mean, four hundred eighty million dollars is more than the last fifteen projects Nebraska has put together. I mean, it's just jaw dropping that 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 is the case. Um, you're right, though. Here, it, the new the new track will be done in the next year or so for Gary Pettit's track and field squad. The gymnastics facilities is now done. I think probably the next thing on the list will be baseball, softball. Needs yeah. a, a fresh coat of paint to do that. But, man, just amazing to see um, that kind of a number come out. Northwestern's by far the, it's the only private school in the league, by far the smallest enrollment in the conference. And they don't have a lot of – but they, that football stadium is, is really ancient and old. I like it. I kind of like the throwback feel of it, but it is really old. So, new stadium, how many, how many seats? Did it, did My it guess is they'll probably put it about 40,000. Yeah. Keep it much, a little bit smaller. And yeah. Baylor did the same thing in the Big 12. And that's and a nice a stadium. Place. Yeah, it's nice. And it, and it really feels like they are packed in on you. It's loud. It, it really creates that environment for Baylor. So, that, that's kind of – Strate yeah, no, it's not, but it's strategic in that yeah. way where it is definitely creates that home field advantage. Yeah, so that's basically what's coming to Northwestern. I think is a brand new football stadium. I think they're going to basically gut that thing and uh, knock it down. Buckle up, put that phone down. It's a reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Just a couple more minutes of sports out of here with you on, on tonight. Uh, tomorrow, we'll have two coaches shows. We'll have the volleyball show in hour one tomorrow night. Uh, that's normally on Tuesday, but they flew to Chicago yesterday. So uh, for travel to play this match tonight. So that's tomorrow. And then we'll have our football show with Barrett Rude. Uh, looking forward to talking to him because he's going to be proud of his players. 
Reimer and Henrich and Snodgrass and Kolarvik are playing really good football for Nebraska. It's crazy how we've matched that up where uh, I had Samori last week. You had Lubick on the show. Now I'm going to get Reimer. And That's right. You got Rude, so you'll be able to maybe get some uh, questions for me to include in my feature. But, yeah, he seemed really proud of his guys. And also those were guys were the – the biggest kind of cheerleaders, uh, you know, to, to say on the sideline. I mean, boy, they were so fired up with when the offense would do something big. I mean, you can really tell that they're kind of the heartbeat of, of that team and, and of this defense for sure. And, yeah, I can't wait to hear what he has to say about his guys. They've been performing well. Yeah, so that's tomorrow night's lineup for you. So back-to-back -back coaches shows headed your way tomorrow night. Nebraska 811 says go dig red. Before you dig, always call or click 811 to have your utility lines marked. It's free. It's easy. It's the law. It was picture day today for Fred Hoiberg's basketball team. The guys all look nice. Uh, Eduardo Andre wasn't there. They're going to have to Photoshop him in. He wasn't feeling good, so he didn't make the picture day. But it's kind of a fun day. Kind of means you're getting close. It really is. It, and you can just get a sense. I, w I went down there for a little bit, and again, you can just feel the excitement. You know when you start doing the team photo shoots and you're, you know, stuff for the Husker vision and the starting lineups and all that kind of stuff that you're right around the corner. And, boy, both teams starting next week. Can't wait to see how they look like to start this thing out. One of the players, and, and the media were kind of hanging around and were able to ask, kind of fire some questions in. Um, one of the players, I can't remember which one, that said that Tomi Anga is the best shooter he's Geisha, ever seen. Yeah. yeah, and that you don't count his makes you count the rare misses. How about that? Yeah. Woo! Which you knew, you saw it. We we yes. we've heard about it. Coach Hoiberg loves his shooters, um, and what a weapon that can be. You know, if he comes off the bench, and that's your job, and that can be a dagger sometimes for teams if you just come in and knock down a huge three. It's a, a huge momentum swing. Yeah, gonna be good. So the practice starts next week uh, for both the men and women. It starts on Tuesday. Uh, we're, we're working to get Coach Hoiberg on the program next week. Uh, you had a sit down, great sit down with Amy Williams just a week or so ago. They're fired up. They're ready. They said goodbye to Jazz Shelley. Here in the last day or so, she has flown off to go play in this World Games with the, the her country, Australia, in Amman, Jordan, is where she's off to. So she'll be out of pocket for a couple of weeks. But they're all for her doing that. It's a huge opportunity and and big for this program too. You know, put them on a, a international stage, and um, you know she'll be able to come in and adjust just fine. She's already fit in so well, and and they think she's going to be a big piece this year. So. Big opportunity for her. Really good. Hey, visit a participating ag co dealer between now and November 12th and enter for a chance to win a pair of tickets to the Huskers' last home game of the year against the Iowa Hawkeyes on November 26th. That's going to include pregame tailgate. That'll be fun. Hey, go see participating ag co locations across Nebraska, and you could be a winner this season. Husker basketball is going to have that Halloween charity game with Colorado. So that will be on Halloween Day. That's a Sunday. Uh, that'll be at noon, then they'll have an exhibition game a couple days before that. Uh, October will zip along, and they will be into it and getting after it and getting ready for the upcoming season. The women also have an exhibition game before they start their season as well. We're waiting to get some start times for some of these games in November uh, for the basketball teams, and we should be getting those here in the next week or so. A lot of volleyball still ahead, conference action, doubleheader header night on BTN. they got a match going on right now. The Huskers match will come up. Uh, right after that on BTN, we'll have the whole broadcast for you coming your way here in just a couple of minutes as the Huskers launch their uh, get into this Big Ten bet Northwestern tonight. Iowa, which, by the way, has been set for a 2 o'clock first serve Saturday at the Devaney Center. Uh, they waited and set that time after we got the football start time, which we found out a week or so ago was at 6 o'clock. I'm ready for a night game on Saturday. I don't know about you. I'm ready. I am, too. And I'm also excited to see how many Husker fans uh, make the trip up there. It's a long ways up there. Yeah, but, I mean, boy, they, it was a long ways down to Norman, I feel like. but yeah, About double the drive. Oh, it is? Here. I don't know yeah, what it is. It's probably 12 hours. To I'm obviously 19. still getting my bearings yeah. on the uh, directions around here. It's, but It's a hike out there. You know, just but it's a huge matchup. Yep. And, you know, they were calling out about saying 2,500 tickets is what Nebraska took. That's better be all that he sees up there. So huge challenge, huge opportunity. And I, I think these, these guys will be ready for it. I do, too. We, we talked about it um, Monday and Tuesday's show about everything we've heard the players and coaches say since the loss have been what you wanted to hear them say. And I don't think it was fake. I think it was real. I think they, they're tired of coming up short. They want to bust this thing down and turn this thing around and start putting it in the win column. Yeah, and, uh, you know, a night game is a little bit challenging because you've just been playing day games, and a lot of players don't like to sit around the hotel. But it's going to be a juiced atmosphere and, you know, a, a ranked opponent. It's going to be one of many that are left on the schedule. And 
they feel like they're right there. And, you know, even as good as they played and no moral victories, they felt like, you know, they should have won that game and are ready to attack it and, and improve and be better this week. Well, we're here, and for just another minute or so on the Acres Broadcast Center, Acres Equipment, Nebraska's premier John Deere dealer, 27 locations across Nebraska, and down into Kansas, Acres Solutions for every field. That's going to put a wrap on Sports Alley here on a Wednesday night. Tomorrow night again, coaches shows, volleyball first hour, football hour number two, kick back, relax. Listen to some Husker Volleyball with John Bader and Lauren Cook-West. Thanks to Jessica, to Mike, to Andrew, to Tim, and all of you for listening. Enjoy the volleyball. If you're driven by an adventurous heart, you're in luck. The 2021 Subaru Outback shares your spirit. It will take you as far as you want to explore with standard symmetrical all-wheel drive. It'll get you off the beaten path with 8.7 inches of ground clearance, more than Toyota RAV4 or Honda Passport. It's the best Outback ever. The 2021 Subaru Outback. Go where love takes you. Comparison based on competitor information for manufacturer websites as of July 2020. Visit Beardmore Subaru in Bellevue or at BeardmoreSubaru.com. Welcome to Ag Answers. Today we're talking about renewable biofuels like corn ethanol and soy biodiesel. Electric vehicles continue to make headlines as we look for ways to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. But did you know by using ethanol, you can reduce greenhouse gas emissions by up to 46% compared to traditional gasoline and by up to 86% when you use biodiesel compared to petroleum diesel? Locally produced biofuels are the here and now solution to combating climate change. They are good for our air, good for our wallets, and good for Nebraska. This message is brought to you by Nebraska's corn and soybean farmers. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm journalism student Grace Fitzgibbon with Campus News. For the fourth year in a row, the University of Nebraska system ranked as one of the top 100 institutions worldwide in earning U.S. patents. The NU system was granted 38 patents, and of those, 27 were awarded to UNL researchers. The result? New startup companies, jobs, and university-licensed products that grow Nebraska's economy. There's a call on the field for a quality seed specific to where you farm. Make the right call with Prairie Valley. With local research in eight regions throughout Nebraska, Prairie Valley performs with their locally specific hybrids and varieties while achieving the highest quality and yield. No matter where you farm in Nebraska, Prairie Valley has the seed for where you are. Find a local dealer and learn more about the seed for where you are at prairievalleyseeds.com. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. It's game on at Sid Dillon Buick GMC Cadillac in Fremont. Featuring our winning combination of Buick SUVs and GMC trucks and SUVs. And as a GMC business elite dealer, we offer commercial vehicles for your business needs. For the convenient and easy way to shop for your next vehicle, just visit our Fremont location. Or check out our full inventory at SidDillonBuickGMC.com. You are what drives us. Dylan. We are professional grade. You always dreamed of owning your own farm. Now you're living your dream and it's time to pick the tractor that makes it all come together. Massey Ferguson has reinvented what compact and utility tractors can be and redefined what they do, making them easier to operate, more comfortable to drive, more versatile than ever. Massey Ferguson gives Nebraska farmers the power and performance to win in the field. Carney Equipment, Carney, Nebraska, your big red Massey Ferguson dealer in central Nebraska. From vintage sneakers to bacon scented soap to water fountains for your pet, all can be had with a few simple clicks. Problem is, you never really know what you're going to get until they show up at your door. Introducing Ford Blue Advantage. It's used car buying that's built for you. Not only can you shop for used vehicles online, in person, or both, you can also test drive before you buy, so you know exactly what you're getting. Plus, get history reports, vehicle inspections, Ford warranties, and the expertise of factory trained techs. Visit FordBlueAdvantage.com today. Hey, Husker fans, if you're looking for an exciting new career as part of your pandemic recovery, Iowa has over 75,000 job openings in industries such as healthcare 
advanced manufacturing, construction, IT, and ag. IowaWorks.gov has more information about job openings, earn while you learn apprenticeships, and exciting training and scholarship opportunities. Find your next great job in Iowa. They've got a solid game plan, a bright future, and want you on their team. www.iowaworks.gov. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker Athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall at Zone 6 in Exarban Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Road townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. Addy Sports Bar and Grill is the place to watch Nebraska games this season. Locally owned and operated, Addy's is Omaha's premier sports bar with four locations in Elkhorn, Maple Street, Millard, and the new flagship Capital location in downtown Omaha. If it's Husker game day, it's on at Addy's. Addy's Sports Bar and Grill is Omaha's official watch party spot with game day giveaways, prizes, fun, and more surprises later in the season. Addy's Sports Bar and Grill. See you there for the game. Live on the Huskers Radio Network, it's Husker Volleyball, powered by Emeritus, proud to be the official insurance and investment partner of Nebraska Athletics. Lexi shot, kaboom! Now Nebraska once more. Bump set from Kenzie. Jazz right pin needs it. She's got it. A huge hammer from Jazz Sweet. Kubik off to dig it out. She fired that one with the right shoulder. Husker Volleyball is sponsored by 